Good morning, everybody. Today, we have a really fun discussion. Um, I'm not even going to be getting my guitar out today because I'm just going to be describing to you um, how I set up my personal practice routine as well as a way that I've gotten my students to set up their routine where I'm seeing really, really, really great results. There's a new thing that I purchased for my practice room a couple of weeks ago that I'm going to share with you guys that, that actually, it, you know, they, these things generally cost like 12 bucks um, and it has just set my practice routine on fire and I get a lot more done and a lot less time. Um, so let's let people kind of filter in here. I'd like you to say hi when you join in. Good morning, Angie. Good morning. Um, ask me some questions. I'm going to take care of some questions after I kind of run you through this process. Uh, this is something that is so, so important, guys. So before we get to all the nitty gritty, I just want to say thank you to all my dojo members. People are starting to join the site a lot more, which makes me very, very happy. Um, every Tuesday and Thursday, it's going to be dojo members only for the live stream. I'm sorry to everybody else, but you know, I'm trying to make this the YouTube part of this actually my full career. Um, so, you know, I got to eat. So, anybody can join the dojo for two dollars a month, and you can go up to the twenty-five dollar a month tier, where you will get one book written by yours truly in the mail per month. Um, so that's a lot of fun, really cool. Um, so let's talk about the practice room. And the first thing that we need to do when we talk about the practice room is differentiate practice and play, okay? And one thing I always tell my students is, I am here to help you with your practice time. Your play time is none of my business. It's your time. My playtime is my business too. You know, and, and I actually, my playtime a lot of the time is spent with a looper, electric guitar, and cello, right? And I don't, I don't, I don't really let anybody in on that time because it's mine. Um, so the difference between practice and play is practice is when you're sitting down to get better at something, and play is the time that you spend just enjoying your instrument. And you absolutely need both. It's kind of like yin and yang, where one side represents order and the other side represents chaos. And you kind of need to have a little bit of a foot in both. Now, practice time is something that you should time, journal about, measure, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Um, play time is something that you really shouldn't structure too much, maybe warm up for it so you don't hurt your hands, but just sit down and enjoy. Right, just sit down and enjoy. You need to do both every day. Um, so if you guys like that, hit thumbs up because that helps uh, get my stream out there while I'm going. Uh, I'm going to show you ingredient number one for practice. And this is very important. Um, I have a free version of what I'm about to show you. You can you can actually download off of my channel, right? So I've got a practice journal. This is my put your heart into it practice journal. You can download a free copy. Uh, hey, look, my mom's at the stream. Hey, Ma. <laughs> you guys could download a free copy of this if you like. I also have hard copies for sale. Um, so this is a big deal here, guys, a practice journal. I'm going to show you my personal practice journal here in just a moment. Um, so let me take that. And actually, I'll just leave that up. I'm going to leave that up in the corner. So my personal practice journal um, is a slightly different than the one that I offer for download because I know my goals very well. But the, the idea behind a practice journal is you're sitting down to ask yourself, okay, what is it that I want to do and how do I get there? And without writing that down, you're a lot less likely to even ask that question, right? So that's, that's a very important question. If you can't ask that question, it's going to be very hard to get to where you want to go. Now, the way my practice journal has it lined up is it'll actually ask you your goals and it'll ask you which warm-ups you're going to be doing and then you'll write down, you know, kind of what are the stages of your goals and you'll track them that way. Now, personally, I use something a little bit more simple than that. I have it laid out like that for the student so that you can start thinking about that. But the, the method that I use personally is slightly different. It's actually just much simpler. Um, if you see... I've got a number of tick marks. Um, so I say these are all like 15 minute sessions, right? 
Uh, this has been a slow practice week for me because I've been so busy writing books. Um, these are 15 minute sessions and it's, you know, each time I do one, I put a tick mark and those sessions all go towards my goals. So my personal goals right now, I want to do all of Fernando Soar's Opus 60 as classical guitar lessons on this channel, right? So I look at, a I look at those for about, a, you know, 15 to 15 minutes a day, sometimes half an hour. Um, I, there's also some other etudes that I want to put up, and so I spend a little time practicing those and and making sure that when it comes time for me to to get on air and and teach it that I you know I feel prepared. Um, I also work on um, some cello scales. I work on writing music for my electric guitar. I work on some classical guitar repertoire that I just enjoy playing. Um, that I'm trying to be able to just be able to play through. Uh, I also work on a little blues fingerstyle guitar and I do some looping and those are all things that go towards my goals, my personal goals, right? Um, and I look at each kind of practice chunk as an entire week's worth of practice, right? So these are not daily tick marks. These are weekly tick marks because some days you can't get to as much practice as the other. So you want to be able to say, all right, what have I done so far this week? And how can I make sure I'm ready to move forward into the next week, right? So practice is a perpetual thing. This is, this is what you do now, guys. You don't stop practicing. You don't just like, oh, I learned it all and now I'm done practicing. You are going to practice all the way to the end of your life, I hope. I know I am. And in fact, the reason I've chosen teaching over a performance career is because I love the process of practice. I love doing it. I love practicing more than I like performing, by far. But I mean, I like practicing probably a thousand times more than I like performing, which is why I don't perform so much so often. Um, and I've, I've fallen in love with that process, and I love showing students how to do it. And so I get to not only do it all the time myself, but I help people along um, with practice. And it's, it's, it's so much fun for me. So fall in love with your practice, guys. This is what you do now. That's all I have to say. So let's talk about when each time you put a tick mark down, like what, why am I going that route? And that's because it's very measurable. So I'm going to show you the next practice essential, a timer right? You need to know that it's going to be 15 minutes. It's much easier to start practice um, if you know how much time you're going to be sitting down. Also, if you're doing 15 minutes at a time, and honestly, you know, if you're, if you say, all right, well, I want to sit down for like an hour. Well, do 15 minute sessions and then just take a one minute breather in between each one. That's it. Um, so what you're doing with 15 minutes is you're saying, this is the thing that I'm going to get better at. And I'm not just saying an etude. It's one measure of an etude, two measures of an etude. And I'm going to show you um, how to track how you're getting better at it uh, in just a second. But it's very specific goals that can actually be accomplished in about 15 minutes. Um, and that's going to make sure that you're focusing for those 15 minutes. I know a lot of people that come in for guitar lessons. And unfortunately, you know, there are a lot of people that won't sign up from day one. They'll say, all right, I've been playing guitar for like, Six months, I'm not getting anywhere. Like, what's wrong? And they come in, and I would say probably 70 to nine, somewhere between 70 and 90% of the time, it's their practice session is that's the first thing that's wrong. They just like if you pick up your guitar and you just start playing and and you're daydreaming and you're playing and you're daydreaming dreaming and you're playing, then you're getting a lot of daydreaming and playing done and almost no practice done, right? Um, Nerfiana, you can always catch the reruns. So Nerfiana is sad that she can't join the live stream. Always check the reruns. Um, I wish I, I wish there was some way to do it live for everybody, right? So you can always, always improve your practice session. And most of the time, if you're not seeing the results that you want to see, the first thing that you need to look at is your practice session. And if you're not doing it in, in kind of small measured bits then you're missing out on a lot of progress. So the first 15 minutes might be the first four measures of an etude. The second 15 minutes might be the next four measures. And the, the, the third 15 minutes might be all eight measures together, right? Now, I'm about to show you um, one other thing that I've, that I've purchased uh, after I show you something that I have to say that you need to get. <laughs> because 
in all honesty, uh, this is the one nobody likes to hear, but this is actually one of the most important. A metronome. Guys, you need to practice with a click um, at least half the time. Practice with a click. Until you get very good at counting, you need to practice with a click. So the metronome is absolutely essential, the timer and the metronome. Now here's my favorite thing. The abacus. This is awesome. I'm going to say it twice so you guys understand. This is awesome. This is going to keep you in the practice room. This is going to keep your head in the practice room. It's very easy to sit down in the practice room and start thinking about like Jurassic Park or something, right? No, you need to keep your head in the practice room and this is how you do it. So if I'm sitting down to practice an etude and I say I want to get better at these three measures, each time I play it properly, I'm going to move one over. I'm going to move another one over. Um, Meitaharu is asking which metronome app I use. I'm using the Soundbrenner one. Um, it's pretty good. I would say as far as metronome apps go, just go for a simple. Simple is better. Um, if you go for one that has all these different sound effects and stuff, then ye, uh, maybe it's a little too complicated. So here's how you sit down to learn like a good three measures of music. You say, all right, I'm only going to play the first three like notes or the first two beats or the first beat and a half or whatever, just a very small amount. I mean a small amount. I'm not kidding, guys. And you play it once, twice, thrice, four times, five times. And after those five times, let's just add on another beat. Once, twice, thrice, four times, five times. And after you do that, let's add on like another beat or beat and a half. Like not too much, just a handful of notes. I mean a small handful of notes. Once, twice, thrice, four times, five times, right? And then add on a couple more. Da, ba, 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 ba. And how many of these can you get to, to the other side before that 15 minutes is up? And I promise you, if you start with a small amount of material, you know, the first four notes of a measure, the first three notes of a measure, sometimes I have students start with the first two notes of the measure, and then you just do five, and then you add on another like one note or two notes, and you do five. And then you add on another one note or two notes and you do five. You add on another one note or two notes and you do five, right? That is so efficient. It's absolutely so efficient. And you need to do everything very, 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 very slowly. Guys, this is your secret weapon. It keeps your head in the practice room. If you're in the practice room and you're kind of willy-nilly about how much repetition you're doing, um, then you're going to lose out on a lot of of, of really great progress. So let me tell you three things about this abacus that's really good, especially for a beginner. Number one, it causes you to get enough repetition, but not too much. Now, the reason I look at the practice session as a week long thing is you need to get good rest in between your practice sessions before you get too much repetition because your brain digests things in your sleep and you need to let it do its thing, right? So that's number one. You get five tick marks and you keep moving. That's enough repetition, but not too much. It keeps you moving, but it makes sure that you're not moving too fast. A huge mistake a lot of learners make is, oh, I'm just going to try and play all the way through the piece every time. No, guys, that's not how it works. You play little chunks and you count repetition. How much have you done it, right? Number two, it gives you something physical in front of you to say this is practice time, not play time. And the, the thing that's really important about it is actually that you have to take your hand away from the guitar and move this over so that you're taking a breath between each try. If you just keep trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying again, then you're getting into this tunnel mode. And tunnel mode's not a good thing, guys. It's not. Um, you start to tighten up. You'll start to make more mistakes. I mean, it's just not a good thing, right? This keeps you out of tunnel mode. You have to take your hand away, and I always suggest taking a deep breath before you try again. Um, that is number two, right? You're, you're, you're present. Daydreaming in the practice room is very easy to do, and you have to avoid it really at all costs. Number three, this aids in 
actually doing music theory too, right? So if you're sitting down and you say, I want to, so with this practice session, I'm going to learn the fretboard better, right? Something I've been doing with my students is say, all right, well then let's pick a key and let's say we, we pick G major or something, right? Okay, we're going to figure out how to play the G major chord five different times. Then we're going to figure out how to play the A minor chord five different ways from in here, right? Um, and you just go through it, right? And you're getting points. You're kind of turning it into a game. Um, so, Prabhin, hey, give me an email, buddy. I'm asking you to give me an email. I'm happy to give you access, but you have to email me. Um, understand that I need to make a, a living doing this. So don't get upset with me, but send me an email, ross at musicandguitarlessons.com. All right, so this is your secret weapon, guys, plus your journal, um, plus tick marks every time you get a 15-minute session in. Being able to set up 15 minute long goals is, it's just an awesome thing to be able to do. The last point I want to make, guys, this is the very last point that I want to make, and uh, then I'm going to get to some more questions. So type those questions down in the chat. Um, expect to make progress 1% at a time, okay? There is no master the fretboard in five weeks. There is no, you know, be the best guitarist on the planet in one month. No, those, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And, in quite, and quite frankly, those that expect to master guitar within a handful of months don't deserve to master guitar, okay? Guitar is a lifelong relationship. Music is a lifelong relationship. It's not something that you merely conquer, to me, I, I view music as kind of speaking to God in a way. And you don't master that. You get better and better and better and better and better. Now, if you're getting better 1% at a time, that's also compounded, right? So if you're this good and you go up 1%, well, that, that, what you've just, that progress you've just made, you're going to make another 1% on that, right? And there's a curve. Getting better becomes a lot easier. At the beginning, it's very, very difficult. And, and um, there are a lot of people that fail to make it past the three to five year mark. But if you treat your practice as something that you measure every week, and it's separate from your playtime, right? Play as much as you like. Um, I like to sit down in the evening and have a beer and loop. That's what I do with my playtime. You know, I do it as much as I like, and I don't really put too many strict rules in there. I mean, it's just, it's fun. Um, but practice time, you know, that's time to sit down, focus, time to get better. And it's, not, it's just what I do now, right? I'm going to do it until the day I die. Um, at least I hope, unless, you know, I, I lose an arm or something. Um, so, <laughs> Beitaru, that's funny. So he says, uh, it's great until your wife gets into the room to make some cleaning between practice sessions and, and moves the contraption. Yeah, I know that uh, from personal experience myself, too. Um, but hey, you know, uh, you could always hide it. I'm actually playing around with the idea of designing a uh, music stand that has one of those things built into it. So uh, maybe I'll be able to do that. Uh, I want to say one more thing to everybody, then I'm going to go ahead and get off the air here. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, um, yes, please comment on my videos and stuff like that. But the place to really do that is to send me an email. I, if you want to, to talk to me about maybe an issue you're having. So Probin, I, I, he joins my live streams. I, I really love having him at my live streams, but he seems pretty upset that I am closing Tuesdays and Thursdays off the dojo members only. If you have a problem with that, I think it's just kind of it's too bad. Like, you you know, two dollars a month is all you have to pay to get on the Tuesday and Thursday live streams. That's like a cup of coffee. So, um, and if you're confused at all, if you can't afford it, just send me an email, and maybe we can trade a membership for you spreading the word. Right? I'm very I'm a very nice guy, and I want to work with everybody, but I also need to eat just like everybody else. So please. Um, you know, if you want access to my other live streams, just join the the dojo. It's all, it's a it's two bucks a month for the the beginning membership, and you get access to the streams with the two bucks a month. So um, 
I have people from multiple countries that have joined. Uh, you can do it through PayPal, credit card, what have you. Um, musicandguitarlessons.com slash membership. So I'm sorry, Robin, but you've got to send me an email or you've got to sign up. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, guys, go out and practice. This works. This works. If you want to sit down with me for a half hour, I'm giving a free half hour out, guys. A free half hour. If you want to sign up and sit down with for a 30-minute strategy session with me personally, I'm not charging anything, um, and I can run you through your own practice session with one of these. Uh, my students that adapt this are just progressing faster than I've ever had my students progress so this is this is a very 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 good thing um, you can get that practice session by claiming that free journal it'll send you to the page to claim the practice session or you can check the link below um, one more question I'm gonna answer from Nerfiana uh, so if your strings are buzzing most of the time that means you're not close enough to the fret so you got to get your finger right up to the fret um, not past the fret, but just right up to it. Um, it. Oftentimes it actually isn't that you're not applying enough pressure, though sometimes it is. Uh, you get it right up to the fret, and you should see that buzz go away. Um, all right, guys, this was fun. Have a good day. Um, I will see you Monday. We're going to be doing um, some two-hour fretboard memorization on Monday, uh, starting uh, with me putting notes on the screen in terms of the fretboard and you writing it down with the staff paper. So get prepared for that, guys, because it's going to be a lot of fun.